Is there a spare table here if you want to move closer? Or there? Thanks. Okay, make yourselves comfortable. Does, does everybody have a drink? Especially the two ladies at the back, you've got a drink? That's all you're here for, right? No other reason. Can you make yourselves comfortable? That's the perfect gift. Okay, so what do you want to drink? Water. They don't serve water here. Sparkly water. Champagne. Water. Josh, you must. Alright, so are you all are you, are you comfortable? Small crowd or a small group. So make yourselves easy. Comfortable. Are you comfortable? Cool. Alright, so before, can you hear what's being said? Because there's a bit of music in the background. Can we, uh, can we kill the music? Can you put it right down? Can you put the music right down? Oh, sure. Thank you. Excellent. So, thank you for coming. I, uh, I didn't push this as hard as I wanted to, but that's fine. Uh, before we bring Lolita to the stage, there's a couple of things that I, I would like to uh, start with. The first one is a man. He's French. Uh, which is a bit. Uh, and he's going to tell you about a little event. Most of you probably, there'll be three or four of you want to go to it. But it's worth knowing about. It's uh, all about data. So Cedric, come and say a few words, let these guys know. Hey guys, I'll be very quick, uh, my name is Cedric, uh, and uh, we are bringing a very famous event from London, it's called Music Camp. It's all about analytics and data, so if you like data, if you are kind of uh, analytics, if you should those, uh, you might want to uh, have a look. Who, who likes data in this room? Everyone. I do! Everyone oh, should! Oh, oh nice! Oh, right. Again, again? Yes. Every yeah. time uh, I say it, you put more hands up. Everyone did. Not dating. Data. Data. Uh, we might have some. Oh. 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 Sorry, again. Data. <laughs> Who likes dating? Why don't you put their hands up? Who likes dating? <laughs> Nobody. Who likes data? Yes. Alright. <laughs> um, so it's on, on January 17th. Um, the whole day, and the format is a, is a little different from anything that you know. You basically come in the morning and you make the conference. Um, you define the topic that you're interested in, and you can even run a workshop, so it's very interactive. Uh, January 17th... Is uh, this the first time in Hong Kong? First time in Hong Kong, first time in Asia. Cool. And uh, we released the first batch of tickets, it's already uh, gone. And the website is Measurement Camp? Uh, the website is... Yeah, I've got a short thing. Okay. Uh, bit.ly slash mchk15 That's not easy to remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's measurecamp.hk Yeah, you can do hongkong.measurecamp.com Okay. Alright. <laughs> I'll see you there. Thanks. 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 Well, where? Where? Where is it? Uh, it's uh, hosted by KPMG at Eisenpix. So, Cause Bay. Okay. Excellent. Good job. Thanks, Cedric. Thank you. By the way, one other thing Cedric does it's all about your group. Yeah, foundation. The what's called uh, founders. Right. I also That's run an cool. um, early stage startup incubator called Founder Institute. Um, it comes from the US and we help uh, first time entrepreneurs just created their first batch with some very successful uh, projects. One of them just got accepted to a Cyberport incubation program. Uh, so have a look. FI. How many of them are female? Uh, That's the topic today. Actually, 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 a good 50%. Uh, oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Hong Kong. Hong Kong is ahead of America, I'll tell you. FI.co, that's an easy that's one. That's it. <laughs> FI.co, no. Thanks. Good job, Sam. Right. Thank you. All right. So, uh, before Lolita comes on stage, I got this rather weird email yesterday that said, I've just launched a website. It's called Confident Lover. And I thought, oh my god, it's a spamming thing, I better, I better be careful, but I clicked on it anyway. And it's actually a website that teaches you about certain things. So lucky, luckily, the lady who set it up, who's an entrepreneur, is here. 
So Christine's going to say a few words about her website. Some of you might be embarrassed. If you are, please leave now. Some of you might be, oh my god, finally. I was, oh my god, finally. So let's a uh, warm round of uh, welcome for Christine. So the reason why I decided to start Open and Lover is actually, it's actually for two reasons. One is to eliminate all sexual taboos, and the second reason is... They can't! They can't hear you. Is this better? Uh, so the first reason is uh, to eliminate all sexual taboos, and the second reason is um, to really just create a space where men can just come and learn all about the wonderful, fascinating sexual anatomy. So and again, men can learn about what? All about the wonderful and fascinating sexual anatomy. Because oh. I get so many complaints from women that men are not very adequate lovers, they're bad and bad. Okay, let's take a quick poll. How many women agree with her? One. The two ladies came here to drink. Is that a question? <laughs> How many men agree with her? None. The Frenchman. Excellent. And I really don't think that it's fair to really blame men because where do men go to learn about sexuality and yeah. to learn all about all the church? Work? I went to the church. You went to the church. Yeah, the Catholic that church. Is bad. The Catholic church is very good. No, it teaches you about don't men. Don't touch yourself. About men. Um, so I decided to create this wonderful website because I really don't think that men really have a place of reference other than porn. And porn is really a masturbation tool, not a porn of reference. So what is the name of the website? Confidentlover.com Can you remember that? Which of these three websites can you remember? <laughs> Confidentlover.com fi.co bit.ly dot mc15 is that it? Yes. Which, one, which one are you going to remember when you leave tonight? Confident, <laughs> confident or competent? Oh, not uh, competent, that's good. Confident right? lover, I should write that you are. Yeah, 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 you are, pretty. <laughs> Interesting, so, so how do you get the content for your website? Um, I do believe in the law of authenticity and I've done 10 years of research. Um, so I've so are, you, are, you a, are you a qualified sexologist or is that what they call nowadays? I think, I'm, think, I think I'm more of a sexual uh, scientist because I do want to learn from Eastern <coughs> cultures as well as Western cultures all about sexuality. And I do practice and teach what I, what I learn. So I really? think that's what I think. I um, think that, there's a slot for you at Measure Camp. Oh, that's so that's 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 yeah, yeah, fine. So, so, I think it's brilliant what you're doing. Thank you so much. I, I just, so all of you know, my dad, I just told Christine this, when I was 15, I got educated because my dad made a pop-up version of the Kama Sutra. Ooh. So if you haven't seen the Kama Sutra, it's a beautiful work of art, and it teaches you how to make love. Not the videos that you get on the internet, it's really a book, and it's a work of art. So hang out on her website and go and check out the Kama Sutra. It's not .org or .org. Well, right? no, it's just, it's just but you're a female entrepreneur, right? You, you've said I'm going to do this. Yes. I, and how are you going to make money? So what I did is I created an eight-part video course coupled with an e-book that goes into detail everything a man needs to know and have all the tools that they need to become comfortable. So you pay for the videos or you watch the videos for free and you pay for the book? What do no, you pay there's, for? there's quite a bit of free content up right now and you pay for the e-book as well as the video and it's just one package. Well, Lindsay, you've got an interview here. You won't find this in America, I promise you. Too shy. All the Christians. Alright, thank you. Good thank job. Thank you so much for the invitation. Yeah, yeah, thanks for coming on. Brilliant. Thank you. Excellent. <laughs> so, um, Alita, you want a drink? I have a drink. I do, excellent. Come join us. So let's welcome Alita all the way from Seoul. Louder. 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 Deeper too? Do you like that? Yeah. Well, now we're talking. It doesn't make any difference. 
So, I met Lolita on the internet. It wasn't a confident lover. <laughs> it wasn't. It was a ditched lover. It wasn't a good first date. No, it wasn't on a good first phone. date. No. So, uh, Lolita was introduced to me. Is he here? The guy who introduced us. No. Um, through a fellow entrepreneur. And Lolita said, I'm traveling the world and I want to interview some female entrepreneurs in Hong Kong. And I said, why? Um, of which is one of his, just pointed himself out. No, I said, I've got lots. So You've got lots. Should yeah. talk to you later. Who are you? Huh? Who are you? Looks like stand up, looks like stand -up comedy. Yeah. No, yeah. My name's Marika. And why have you got lots of female entrepreneurs? Do you have uh, a farm of female entrepreneurs? No, because I've, I've set up a dinner club. Oh, nice. Called? Called, called, called The Power of Ten. The so Power of Ten? Yeah. We've put, Brilliant. We've put two women together and just chat about entrepreneurial things, and it's all about exponential growth. There you go. Wow. A perfect That's illustration fine. of Hong Kong. My, my Thank you for coming tonight. It's brilliant. Of well, course, my group is better. Yeah. Uh, Peter's got a group too. We're going to do some heckling here. Peter, what's your group called? <laughs> Pandas Angels Network, of course. Pandas? Angels Network. Pandas Angels. Yeah. Like Charlie's Angels. No, nothing like. <laughs> anyway, back Much to you. Much better than Charlie. <laughs> so, so, you're traveling the world, right? Well, what happened? Did you not like America? You were like, I've had enough, it's far too cozy, I live in a big house, I have a big car, and I work for IBM. Actually, that is kind of the story. Uh, so, I mean, so many of us, I think, go into the corporate world very excited to live this happy and fulfilling life that our parents told us that we would live. Right, you go to college, get the job, the big company, IBM, Cisco, whatever it may be. Those were the two for me. And it's all really great, and you feel part of this moving machine, especially with technology, right? Smart Planet with IBM, or Smart Connected Cities, or something like that. The internet of everything, right? The so. internet of everything with Cisco. And it's all really great. Uh, but then certain things may happen in your life, like losing a parent. For me, it was definitely losing a parent. My dad, died five years ago, and that really caused me to stop and think about what am I doing with my life? And why do you have to lose a parent to stop? <laughs> I lost a parent too, but why do you have to lose, I don't understand, why do you have to lose a parent to stop? I know that's a cheeky question, but why do you have to lose a parent you, to stop? You do, you do, but I guess when you're young, and well at least I'll speak for myself, I was just going, right, with what everyone was telling me I should do, including my parents. Go get, a, go get an education, get the corporate job, and I had that, and I was doing it all. But you were living the American dream, right? You told American me you grew up in a, in a shack. I did, actually. And you're Mexican. Yes. By birth, right? Yes, by birth. I actually grew up in a garage. You did? Yes, <laughs> my father. But that's perfect for the tech industry. You can do a startup tomorrow. <laughs> it's cool to grow up in a garage. Look at Mark Zuckerberg. Look at HP. Living Google. in a garage is different. Apple. That's right. Well, so no, I want to know. So you started in the garage, and then you were like the American dream. I'm living it. I got into college. I've got a job at a massive company, a blue chip company, and I'm a woman working in technology. I'm cool. I'm really, really cool. So at least my dad, and it makes me think about how, what it really means to be cool. And so what did it mean to be cool before you lost your dad? Everything I did already. Was cool. Yeah, successful. Were you making a lot of money? I was making a lot of money. Uh, successful young female in technology. What else can you do? Was that hard to be a successful young female in technology? It, it, it is and it's not. I mean, okay. if you focus on it, maybe. But so long as you provide value, that's really what matters. And I was really like, okay, so what's my job? To create value. As a strategy consultant, it was fix problems or reach goals, and as a sales executive, it was basically the same thing. Okay. So, so you were fixing problems, and you were good at it? Yeah. And then? Your dad died. Yeah, then my dad died, and it really made me think about how long do we have in, in our lives. Mm. And I decided that I would think about what I wanted to do in my bucket list, and that was to serve humanity. So my first dad. Sorry, was, surf humanity or surf, serve humanity? Serve. Okay, sir. And not serve. <laughs> so uh, I decided to go to Peace Corps actually, and I went to one of the poorest countries in the world, Burkina Faso. And That's pretty brave. 
Yeah. Was there a war going on there at the time, or, or not? Was there a war? A wall. A war. Is it? A war. A war. A war. Is there a war? Oh, thank you. W A. Was there a war? There was not a war. Um, a lot of there were some conflicts with Mali, so okay. it was put out kind of in the rural area in, in, so did you just in a mud hut. Did you just turn up, or did they train you? Did you go like there? No. Did you spin the globe, or how do you find out? How do you choose where to go? So. Peace Corps actually has an entire process where okay. you, yeah, it's an entire process. Cool. You apply and then they have locations. So you had a crisis, you went to Burkina Faso. Yes. And? And I saw a lot of poverty, a lot of the, the worst things that you could possibly see, right? Lack of electricity, water, um, and people who don't even speak a language, they don't speak dialects out there. And I couldn't actually survive out there, to be honest with you, health-wise. I got parasites, I was sick for two months, and I, I came back to the States. So that didn't really quite work out. I totally, it was total failure. Were you quarantined? Normally Americans like to quarantine people that you know. <laughs> you were, yeah, no, it wasn't totally, E. Yeah. It wasn't E. You were quarantined? No. It wasn't E. Okay, okay. No, people didn't know what I had. But that's okay. I they didn't know what you had? No, they didn't know. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it might be sick now. No, um, yeah, so I basically went and it didn't work out, but it really made me think about could I ever go back to corporate and do what I was doing? And the answer was no. There was definitely this, this obvious need in the world uh, that I wanted to do more work to serve humanity, but I couldn't do it in Burkina Faso in this third world setting. And so I really had to ask myself, how could I? But you didn't see any like entrepreneurs in Burkina Faso. No. No. Right? It's basically survival. It's really survival. Okay. It's really survival. So I came back and and I was really frazzled. Now I had lost my father. I had parasites. Don't know what sort of things I have. Were you married then? Or? I was not married actually. I was okay. nursed back to health by my husband, who's right oh, here, my yeah, biggest yeah, supporter, Josh. Good Yay. job, man. Good nurse. Yay, he was awesome. I couldn't get out of bed for So is it true behind every strong woman there's a strong man? <laughs> I think besides a strong woman is a strong man. And vice versa. Besides, I like the use of words. Besides. Besides. Yeah, so he's there to me. Um, yeah. So so you came back and then how do you get into this idea that um, there's women around the world? who are entrepreneurs and I want to tell their story. How does that, how does that start? Because you know, you did something pretty cool. You went to Peace Corps, right? That's pretty cool. And how do you say, well, I'm going to travel the world and find other females who are doing brave stuff? Yeah, so I guess I was in, in, in this sort of fix where I was trying to figure out what am I going to do with my life? And I cannot go back to corporate. And actually, a small piece of the story, IBM was so amazing that this was actually a sabbatical. And so I really appreciate IBM, Cisco, corporate world is amazing. So sabbatical means you go away and they still pay you. And is that what it means? Well, this is a non-paid sabbatical. It means that they have a job. They keep your job for you. They, yeah, you're That's still cool. employed. So really, really phenomenal. Um, and I really love my job. I wanted to come back to it. But after the you know, boss, it was very difficult to just go straight back to corporate America. Well, were you in America? Uh -huh. where, where in America? Uh, at the time, I was in LA. LA. Los Angeles. So it, it was quite challenging, and so I came back, and actually my role was no longer available. And I was a sales executive uh, for a large enterprise, so 100, actually 500 million to 8 billion dollar annual revenue kind of customers. And I represented software, hardware, and services for my customers. Anyway, it was really rewarding, and I loved it. But after this experience, I just couldn't go back to do that, and. I just kind of froze, and I traveled a little bit around the world trying to figure out what was I going to do next. And I got actually a LinkedIn invite by this manager from Cisco, and they had a position where I could be a sales executive for Native American tribes. So this was actually quite up my alley in terms of marrying what I had already been doing and serving humanity, where right? I could serve the Native Americans. In so in, in America, Native Americans are the poor ones, right? 
there are some poor There is poverty in the States. There is a lot of poverty, actually, that most people don't know. There's about 400 plus Native American tribes, and most of them don't have water, electricity. They are living like the people are living in the Pino Alto. So why do they want to buy a Cisco router? So it, if they haven't got water, uh, water. This, so, so what happens is, this is a very good question, is that there is about 10 to 15 percent of these tribes that actually have casinos. And so gaming is where they, they get their, their... So they run the casinos or, or the casinos just on their land? They own them. So what's so interesting about the Native American... It's like us in Macau, right? Native, China, uh, native uh, families, three families, Macau. <laughs> Yeah, so Stanley I, Ho I, and, and I his three families. I don't know the details of, of the One family. guy, three wives. Okay, got it. Well, there's more than one guy and three, three wives. Uh, but essentially, there are about 10 to 15 percent of these 400 plus tribes uh, have casinos. And that's where they get their money. And they're very, very rich. So there's so much to learn from that. But anyway, the they need a lot of technology to run these high-end casinos, and they are on their own land. So it's not considered Native American land. The reservations are not considered the U.S. They are their own little country. So if you will, do you need a passport to get in there? No, you don't. So how how, how does that transit? So you, you found you got this job working with Native Americans, yeah. and then how does that bring you into what you're doing now? Yeah, so, so basically, this was the first time I was working with Native American tribes and I had to figure out how to work with them, so I decided to go to a local university and take a tribal gaming course, and there I met... There is a tribal gaming course? Yes, yeah, so it's actually... Is it called Clash of Clans? My son plays that, and it's got lots of tribes. <laughs> is that, that's pretty good, isn't it? Tribal gaming. Interesting. There's a course about tribal teaching. Actually, there's an entire there's entire programs that are dedicated okay. for tribal management and tribal leadership, etc. That are put on by tribes. Okay. Uh, by some of the wealthier tribes. So I went to that and I actually met my mentor, who is a chief for one of the Southern uh, California tribes. And called, what's the tribe called? Does that have a name? Yes, it does. What's the tribe's name? It's been about six months since I've left my job. So he's a chief for, for one of the for one of the tribes, and he also works for the, the court system, actually. And he was my instructor, and he served as my mentor. Really, and to go to the class, I learned so much more about just tribal gaming, but also about being a tribal leader. And and at the end of the day, it really got me thinking about what this man was doing. And I asked him actually, why are you here teaching a class when you're a tribal leader, have tons of money, and you don't need to be doing this? And he said, well, Lita, because I am not just a leader, I serve my people, and I want to educate others about what is happening in, in, in the, the tribal nations. And that was really inspiring to me. And it really made me think about who is my tribe? Who is my tribe? And I started it. It started sort of triggered, triggered something in my head, and 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 I looking back, I was thinking, well, I've been working with a lot of males. So is my tribe of a technology male crew? No, not really. And then I sort of started getting into the. I'm a female. I'm a millennial. And there's this whole generation that's doing amazing things. I have a lot of friends that are doing amazing things, starting their own companies, and empowering them. But then there are so many women that are not. But there is this ability for women to self-empower. And and so all of this sort of in, in a long winded type sort of, sort of way. I, I came down to the fact that, well, I want to serve my tribe. And this tribe is the female millennial tribe. And female millennial. Is that the ones you call femme fu pronoun, right? Well, it gets... Is that Okay. I'm getting there. Getting so, there. so female millennials is my tribe, right? So, I just so can I just ask how many women in this room are female millennials? How many men in this room are female millennials? How many males are, are millennials? That's a good question. I want to know. What does a millennial mean again? 18 to 33. It's a generation Y. Uh, I don't know. You've got that. Oh, there you go. Just. Just. <laughs> 
So you were, you were, you found your tribe as the female millennials, right? Okay. And then how does that become a, a trip around the world to discover fellow female millennials? Yeah, sure. That's Actually, I want to know how it becomes Sven Foodpreneur. That's really hard to remember and pronounce. Fair enough. So actually, um, I really went back to, I'm really introspective, so I went back and I was thinking about how I grew up, my humble beginnings, and knowing that the only way and the only reason why I got to where I got was because a lot of people around me supported me and, and empowered, helped me self-empower and empower me. And the thing about it is that if I look at most of the female millennial population around the world, they don't necessarily have the same opportunities to have the education that I had or to be born in, in a country like America, right? And, and so I was thinking that in the, it would be great to promote this concept of having women go into the corporate field, but how many women can actually do that? And there is a large percentage to anyone who wants to argue that point. But how many more women can have access to being an entrepreneur versus just going to corporate? And that's really everyone. I mean, you have all sorts of flavors of entrepreneurship. And so I see it as a very accessible uh, path of self-empowerment. But then why didn't you just start your own startup? You were living in America on the West Coast. Why did you want to go and kind of set up a YouTube channel or a community? Uh, I can tell you from running Web Wednesday, there's no money in community. <laughs> no. Especially if you do it out of your heart. Yes, this is very, very true. So the F show is definitely from my heart. It's yeah. costing me money. It's my savings for my corporate job. And I'm doing it and it's so well worth it. I mean, why do I do it? Because I believe there's nothing like it out there. Okay, so you decided, right, I found a tribe and I'm going to make something out of this. Yeah. What, so you, you, you know, you've got a show called, I don't know, is it The F Show or is it the, the hashtag F show. F show? The F Show. You've got a show called The F Show and you're building a community. So why, why do you want to do this? Why use YouTube to build a show? What, what, what's the idea behind the show? Well, those are a couple of questions. So why use YouTube? Because millennials love video. Any okay. social... So they won't read anything. They will read. They won't read video. Christine's website, the confident numbers. They all think they're. They're all think they're. That's they're right. I want to all millennials think thing. they're good at making love, right? <laughs> so, so YouTube. I mean, this is why. If you see the ratings in terms of who's watching YouTube. Or I know, but we, we had, in Hong Kong we've had some YouTube heroes, right? Uh -huh. And all they do is they're teenagers, girls, selling makeup. And I'm not being condescending. It's true. Like, oh, don't I look good with this, don't I look with that? So you're, you know, you've gone on a very different route. You're saying, I want to show you what other women are doing, right? Correct? So tell us about the show. How does it work? So the show is about inspiring, supporting, and guiding female millennial future entrepreneurs. And, and this is really to the point of, in order, it's, it's so easy to be able to see someone that's like you, your age, your sex, See them doing something and then be inspired to do it yourself, to know that it's possible. And that is the number one goal that I have for the show is to inspire, to let every woman know that she can do whatever she loves and live the life she wants to live. And is that what happens at your dinner for ten thing? Mm -hmm. Same idea, your dinner for ten? Um, you inspire each other? Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, right. Possibility. Possibility, yeah. okay. So, and, and the second and third part are support and guidance. So, this community does need support. So, I've, I've put together a femmepreneur, female millennial future entrepreneur group on Facebook. And anyone around the globe can connect with other entrepreneurs and female millennials as well. In fact, and are they doing that? Are, they, are you seeing people coming together? Yeah, so we've just started, right? And the show hasn't actually started, until, it won't start until next year, but we have about a hundred. And who's your, who, who does the camera work? My husband does. Yes. Is it awesome? So how many interviews have you done so far? So far I've done about 20. 20? 20. 20. In, in which countries? We've gone to Australia, New Zealand, Indonesia, uh, Singapore, Thailand, Japan, Korea, and now we're here. So, so, so you're doing 16, right? We're doing 16. 
Why did you, how did you choose those 16? Well, some of them were chosen based on the fact that... I have peaches. I, wa I wanted, I, we both, my husband and I both wanted to go visit. But also, I mean, if, if, you, if you were to look at the list holistically, we're trying to represent different regions around the world. Ideally, we'd represent all regions around the world.